Hey everybody, Dustin here. Thanks for checking out another video. So I've been talking to ChatGPT now for a couple of weeks, and it's just got me thinking like, what is this thing gonna do for the future of creativity? And on that note, I, I found this cool article that uh, the CTO of Microsoft recently wrote, Kevin Scott, on five ways generative AI will transform work. And I mean, he's not specifically talking about ChatGPT, but I've been following a couple of his videos for like the last year or two. And it seems like, I mean, he's been on the inside of a lot of stuff. So I think he's kind of seen this coming more than some. And now, like for the last few weeks, now that we've had better access to ChatGPT, I think people are being like, oh, wow. And there's a few points of his that I wanted to kind of point out that were kind of really interesting to me. First one, number one on his list here of the uh, five, that it will unleash our <clears throat> creativity. I totally get what he's talking about here. And he actually mentioned this thing here about like how with Dolly 2, uh, I actually used it to create the thumbnail for this video. And how they say that it's given like a visual vocabulary where you can talk to the computer and say, I want to have something that looks like this. And the computer has this like, it understands that vocabulary where it can make pictures that way. And I feel like it's kind of similar with ChatGPT where it's almost got like, I mean, I haven't thought of what it could be like, like a topic vocabulary or something like that, where like I was having a conversation with ChatGPT. I'll just jump into it right here. This is ChatGPT, chat.openai.com forward slash chat. And now it actually, as of the December 15th update, they have this little history thing. So you can kind of look over here and see histories of other conversations you've had. And this is something here where like, I was trying to think like, I wonder if we've ever had anything like this in literature where like people are talking to a, some kind of object or an AI and getting responses back. And like to get that with a Google search, like maybe I could have just done a few things and tried over and over to see if people made articles. But with uh, with ChatGPT, I was kind of able to say like, is there any examples in literature? And then they gave a bunch of generic stuff and I kind of, you can keep giving it context and narrowing it, narrowing it down. And by the end of my narrowing it down here, I got to some pretty good examples where they were, it suggested deep thought from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as a comparative, uh, there was, what was another good one here? I think in the, the diamond, uh, what was it, Dune? There's another interesting thing too here is I actually checked all the sources for these just to make sure for myself. And some of them actually weren't AIs. They were actually other characters. So I think that's one little aha where I, other people have also noted this, that ChatGPT isn't perfect yet. And this is still a system in progress. But the fact is that it actually, like the context part and the walking along was, was going really well. Unfortunately, the results it got were inaccurate. Maybe in some alternate reality, they're accurate. But it really did feel like it understood what I was talking about. So that's one way where I think it's going to unleash creativity is just being able to like get what you're doing and like with, with this vocabulary for topics where I guess it's easier to find. I mean, it's hard to say that it's unleashing creativity. I mean, the title of this is, is this going to kill creativity for us or is it going to be like a new beginning? And this is part of where I'm saying like it's a new beginning is that this will allow us to find things that we just couldn't find before because it's like it, it always had to be like a page that was crawled. And that's essentially the search engines of the past. Uh, and it's not like that anymore. Another point of his, uh, skipping ahead slightly to number four that I thought was really cool and gave me a little visual is he was talking about it unlocking faster iteration. And I think there's some some quotes here where it's like a higher, higher order cognitive tasks. I think that's like what, what we're talking about for abstraction in the same way that some of these higher level languages have kind of made things uh, us able to communicate at a higher level abstraction with if else and that kind of thing. And then slowly it's going to be moved up to a spoken language. And eventually the code that it generates, we're going to be completely happy with. And it's like already GitHub Copilot. It's a lot of the code that it suggests for me, I'm quite happy with often. And, and I've heard like Google has something as well that they're working on. I can't remember what it's called right now. Deep something or something like that. Or alpha code is one of those kind of things. But I, I've heard that that's the future for that. And, and I'm totally okay with it writing code for me and me being able to iterate faster. And in regard to where I had a visual, I was thinking too for going back to Dolly or, or to having an image is you could give it an image and then it could just give you all these variations. And I was thinking in the far future, you could have eye tracking, let's say, and it becomes instant to be able to do these variations where you look at the center, like you put the source image in and then it gives you these variations and then you pick one. And then from that, you get more variations and you could try to kind of just like follow that along. Uh, until you and, and you're just like working with the tool and it could just track your eyes as a preference to which image it's likes of the variations it created like if you stay on that for a few seconds so then you're just kind of like going through the visual uh whatever ver iteration game with this thing and it becomes a, a, an amazing tool and that's where i think it'll get more into ar and vr and eye tracking that kind of thing it'd be cool for that um 
And then I think the last point that I thought was really cool of his was it will make work more enjoyable. And I mean, that's what I'm just talking about right now. Like the first off, the, the stuff it, was, it gives is cool, too. It's just like, oh, man, that's cool. And and like, what is creativity at that point where like it's coming up with variations? Are those creative or is it the fact that I pick one, then it's creative because the human picked it? it it's kind of a, a give and take feeling almost, which is quite interesting, I feel. And. Yeah, so like that's a ma the main part of, of what I was thought was pretty cool. And then just going into some even definitions, like the definition of creativity, the use of imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work. Like that doesn't necessarily preclude being able to generate it in this way that we've created, you know, like humans created this creation creativity machine, let's say. And to say that it's not creative is almost to say like, well, why not if it was made by creative beings or something? Uh, going into imagination here, like the f the faculty or action of forming new ideas or images or concepts. I mean, I would definitely say the stuff it's making, like it's not random noise. Uh, I mean, maybe some of it comes from noise, I think is how some of these models work, like the visual one, but it's not that case anymore, I think. And going to originality, let's say the definition, the ability to think independently and creativ uh, creatively. That's where we go, oh, well, can it think creatively? I don't know. And I've had some conversations with ChatGPT where it, a lot of the time it narrows down to like consciousness and being able to have emotions and the things that of course it's not, it's going to be hard for the machine to have those but are those do those preclude the ability to have creativity it's almost like uh, a gentleman's club of creativity to say that it can't be part of that you know and some examples where it's kind of given me some insight and just going to some videos i've made because i've been making lots of videos about it this one for example uh, was one I made, Code with Chat, Chat GPT, How AI Can Help Contribute to Open Source. And I actually made a PR with this, a pull request, where I contributed to open source. But when I was working with it, I noticed that it suggested this thing called Capture Stream, which was part of uh, this media stream element. And I had no idea about that. That is not what I was expecting, because when I went into the video, I kind of already had an expectation for it. But that's just not what, uh, but the first suggestion was like this totally different thing. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, and it, it kind of took me off guard and I've looked into it more and I think it probably wasn't the best suggestion for the moment, but it, it's kind of the thing where like it, it gave me a spark or an insight and it was like a real thing. Uh, and since then this PR that it made, that we made together, it wrote all of this, by the way, I, I it essentially wrote the code, but I was, I knew what I wanted to write. This is what we got in the end where we didn't use the media element, uh, and it got merged. So that got approved, which is kind of cool. But again, like this is where it gave me a little insight. Another example here is ChatGPT codes in an amazing mind-blowing conversation. This is one I did. Uh, and one thing that I, I wanted it to draw a clock, a 3D clock, and I wanted to use 3JS. And I didn't know at the time, but it used this thing called 3 dot clock. And I thought like, oh, that's just made up. Like, oh, there's a bug. But I looked into it and like 3JS actually had something for like making clocks basically or keeping track of time. And it just decided to use that, but I didn't even know about that. So it's like, would I have ever even, like, I wouldn't have searched for that because I never would have expected that to have been there. So this is, an, again, where it gave me a little insight. And then another one here, ChatGPT, the future of coding. Uh, this is one where I kind of gave it some code samples that I had from my code. And I just found that it was giving me, like, really cool insights where I basically said, like, it was a bunch of if-else conditions. And I was just like experimentally what it like write it without conditions and it gave me like this little map and it was completely off random and off but it was like oh yeah like that's i guess how you could do it like i i never i wouldn't have thought of that and there's no way to search for that or like you would have to talk to a person and give them your code and then even they wouldn't want to do it it's like no i'm not gonna do that that's a waste of time but just to be able to see it you know was something that i thought was really cool and that's i think where something people could experiment with is just whatever result you get from chat gpt ask like could this be done another way or what's an alternative? And it, it can give you alternatives essentially, which is kind of a cool thing. And, and then just kind of a, as to, to try a new chat here while we're at it. Oh no, is it down right now? It's, this is another interesting thing is that it's been up and down all the time. Uh, I saw some Alinus Tech Tip video, which is a popular YouTuber where he did a video building a computer with ChatGPT. And, it's, and even it went down in the video. So it, it's extremely popular right now. And because of that, it's, it's going up and down. But one of the experiments I wanted to do is, you, I mean, you can, like, what is creativity? Again, you can basically ask it to just create something from nothing. You don't, you don't have to go in and say, um, like, one, some examples I've seen where people say, invent a made-up country in detail. It's like, you don't have to say, like, invent something like a Lithuania or make it, like, called Pennsylvania or anything like that. Like, you, you don't have to play that game. You can just say, like, let's make new random stuff. 
Uh, and we'll try here, but if it's down, it's down. I think I've already kind of got my point, but this is where I wanted to say, like, it can be more creative, too, which is kind of cool. Here we go. It's up at the moment. Cool. So let's try to make that an Im imaginary country. Invent a country that doesn't exist. Sure. Here's a brief description of a fictional country called Erindor. Erindor is a small coastal country located in the southern hemisphere. So it's like, is this creative? Like, Erindor, does that exist in any way? Let's search that. Has anyone ever made that up? Michigan Northwest. Oh, so it's a city. It was a chapter of a situated... I don't, th yeah, it's definitely not a country. So did it decide to pick a city? I don't know. The official language is Erodian or er er Erndordian. That's impossible to pronounce, but many people speak English and Spanish. Again, it's very interesting. It's grabbed sources from different things. I found sometimes it can completely make things up. You, I mean, you can even ask it that. Let's try one more. Describe a new word was another one I wanted to try. Describe a new word. And let's see where we get with that. Uh, I'm sorry, but I am a large language model and do not have the ability to create new words. Interesting. What about, okay, so before I use the word, in, I use the wording of invent. Let's try that. Let's try invent a new word. This is another thing I found with ChatGPT is you can kind of reword things and play the game and sometimes you get better results. So let's see what we get. Oh, there we go. We invented a word this time, but we, we couldn't describe a new word, but we could invent a new word. Okay. Uh, Glistenwald. Sounds German, honestly. A field full of glistening, sparkling objects or substances. Okay, let's imagine. I'll try to imagine that. Oh, that field is so... So Glistenwald, man, have you ever seen that? Maybe, no, I don't like the way it made it, but okay, cool. I, I guess I didn't say for which language, so maybe that is German, and then it just described it to me in English. One more I wanted to try here, create a new type of animal. So now we're trying to create wording. Let's see if it can do creation in that way, or if it's, okay, it didn't complain about being a language model here. Sure, I'll help you create a new type of animal. Here's a description of a fictional animal. Introducing a flutter bee. That's a nice one, a flutter bee. Does a flutter bee exist? I feel like it might exist already. It, it exists in a Rindor. The flutter bee. Okay, no, I don't. I think that's a fake thing from like a TV show or something. So again, it's kind of stolen material. And I guess if you were to use this, maybe the flutter bee people would be mad. But I guess if you're saying it's an animal, then it's fictional. So who's to say? But clearly, this is the future. It's interesting. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please throw me a like. Uh, if you want to motivate me or just see more stuff like this, please subscribe. Thanks for checking out this video. See you in the next one. Bye.